All right. Then I want to introduce the shell modeling example. Uh, we will basically fold a sheet. Um, we will not uh, fold anything else, but we will start with a sheet of the dimension 60 by 20 and with a depth of 200. So it is, we choose 3D deformable shell. This is important, so this will make it a 2D body in a 3D space. Um, other than if we go for a 3D deformable solid, if we use continuum shell elements, we will talk about this later. And as a type, we use uh, extrusion because we will model, as we see uh, in the picture on top, we will model the cross section and then just extrude it by 200. And uh, as in um, the previous tutorials, we use a global seed size of 10 and maybe start uh, with S4R and S4 elements depending on if we further coarsen the mesh or not. So we can maybe start with the comparison of these two element types and run two jobs and to see the differences. Um, aluminum, and yes, I didn't uh, create a library last time, but it's also good for repetition, so we will have a similar aluminum-like material model. Now this time it's double linear, so we have three points on our flow curve. So I will just go through this uh, once again. Then the section, of course, I hope you already know that the behavior of a body is mainly defined not by its um, sketch, so not by the geometry, but rather than the section that you choose, because this tells Abacus how to treat this body. Um, the section, in, into the section, um, you uh, put the material model, sometimes the profiles whatsoever, and then the section tells Abacus what to do. So you can define um, the thickness here, and as I said, this is like the determining point where you really specify the thickness of your overall body, because especially for contact problems, um, you know that there is something like the shell thickness, because it cannot be, it cannot have a thickness of zero. So Abacus will actually model this thickness, and we talked about um, where to place the reference surface. Okay, um, we'll do some other setups, then we'll assign a section to our body, um, do the assembly, as you might know. Of course, we'll check energy on, uh, have a maximum of 0.1 so that we get, get at least 10 frames um, from our simulation. Then we'll apply some boundary conditions. So the, the left edge we will fix and then the right edge we will select and move it to the left. So we, so to say, will create a shape like this, or this is at least what we desire. So we do not allow this point to move in any other direction. So this is not allowed, this is not allowed. Uh, so only we will bring the two edges uh, close together. Finally, the final shape would be something like a closed circle. Um, we could alternatively use load this times. So I will delete some stuff here. So on the left edge, we could also apply something that is called a shell, shield, marvel agents of shield. Um, we could apply a load to this right edge and um, you, we can compare it because if you apply loads to shells you have a lot of options to choose from and um, it's also interesting to compare all these. We don't have probably time to do this but as always do your homework, play yourself, uh, use Abacus to, um, yeah, you know what I want to say. So the field output, we'll add some things in the field output which are not um, 
uh, checked by default. So the element volume, the section thickness, the average stress and the uh, in-section strains. Mm. This, this is useful or of interest if you do um, shell type problem modeling. And in the very end, um, we want to see how things look from viewed from the top, from the bottom. We'll compare different stresses and um, I'll introduce the factor of a, the scale factor. We'll talk about this and also that it might be interesting to superimpose the original and undeformed configuration. And if you're still motivated at the very end, you could compare this to your continuum shell simulation and how to do this. It's basically constructed very similarly. However, in this case, we start with a 3D deformable solid part. Uh, we also choose extrusion, so it will be extruded by 200. Again, however, as you can see in the picture here on the bottom, the cross section is now an actual 2D body with a volume, so to say. So you have to model the outermost um, circle of 60, then because we want to model a one millimeter thickness, you choose a distance of 85 of the inner radius and then a height of 20 and 19 um, respectively, so that you actually model the same as you would in this case using one millimeter thickness. And then you say, ah, okay, but this is only comparable if we specify um, the reference surface reference surface, my handwriting is as awesome as always, equal top. Why? Because we gave the same geometry for the outer ring, so to say, compared to our um, conventional shell modeling example. So if we would, for example, use reference surface equal to middle or bottom. In this case, it would be slightly different to what we would model using this type of um, deformable solid. If we would do middle surface formulation, we would have to go um, 61, 61 and 59, so to say. I, I hope you get the idea um, that specifying where the reference surface for the conventional shell is located is very important. Um, same meshing, but here we use the element type as continuum shell. So and the rest stay rather unchanged. unchanged. All right, um, if you have any questions regarding uh, this part, um, text me via Moodle, email, send a carrier pigeon. Otherwise, I hope we'll see each other in Abacus in a couple of seconds. Bye bye.